what narrative creates a pullback? You know, we had the Terra Luna collapse, we had the FTX scandal. What sort of narrative can you envision that creates a major pullback in Bitcoin or is it a macroeconomic development that could perhaps impact Bitcoin? What do you think is likely what? or possible hey. to to derail this this current uptrend? I don't I don't think there is anything. And the reason is is you know going back to the something you talked about at the very beginning is these power laws, right? If you take the if you take the Bitcoin price and the time since the first Bitcoin block was mint mined, right? Which was in January of 2009. And you look at those, both of those, those numbers on a logarithmic scale, you will see that we get an absolute straight line. I mean, there's variation around that straight so you line. Know, Fred, but we're, we're going to pull up the charts that you posted showing yeah. uh, Bitcoin as a power law. So break that down for us. Talk us through that. Okay, so um, so this chart was uh, this chart was discovered by an astrophysicist um, named Giovanni, and uh, when you're looking at things in astrophysical time frames, you need to look at things that are very small or very small, and then things that are very big, like the distance of the, the size of the Milky Way, right? So you tend to look at things on a logarithmic scale. Um, and the way of representing relationships in this so-called log-log space is very natural for physicists. And so it's, it's, not, it's not crazy that a physicist would have first seen this, um, this relationship. So if you look at that graph um, and you look at the price of Bitcoin in the logarithm of the price of Bitcoin, and you look at it in relationship to the logarithm of the time elapsed since the Genesis block, you will see that it's a straight, it sort of wobbles around a straight line right from the very first year of Bitcoin to now. And that straight line means that um, because the straight line is in log space, in log log space, right? That means that the actual price of Bitcoin is roughly time to the power six, okay? Now, you would sort of say, well, that's exponential. It's not exponential. What it is, is it's a polynomial, right? It's a six power. So you know what a parabola is. Parabola is like X squared, right? A cube is even more faster. The cubic is even more faster than a parabola. It's X to the cube. Well, this is X to the power six, and that's roughly how much Bitcoin price goes up in time. Uh, and I can put that in complete perspective uh, because I was asked to explain this. Somebody was asking me this earlier today, and I was like, well, let me give you an example of what that means. We've been in Bitcoin. Bitcoin has existed for 15 years now. Where will Bitcoin price be if the same pattern continues in another 15 years? Will it be double the current price? No. It'll be two to the power six, the current price, which is 64 times as high as it is right now, right? So that's what a power law says, that if you double the amount of time, you get two to the power six higher in price. So 64 times higher in price. Now, that seems crazy, but that's exactly the what Bitcoin has been doing over the last 15 years. I mean, exactly. Um, so, so in so in fifteen years time, Bitcoin at seventy thousand times sixty four. I can't do the math in my head, <laughs> but that, yeah, that's well, that's your price target. Um, yeah, I mean that's you know it's around four to five, four four and a half million roughly. I mean that's kind of what a power law says, right? So a power law says you're going from seventy thousand to four and a half million in fifteen years. Now. Again, you could sort of say, well, that sounds crazy. Why is it going so much? Well, you know, it's not, it's not totally crazy. I mean, the price of uh, Amazon has gone up 100 times over the last, uh, you know, uh, the price of Apple computer has gone up 100 times since they released the iPhone. That was one of my biggest mistakes, I think, was I, I bought shares of Apple when they released the a Apple iPhone. I sold them three years later. At the, it, the price doubled, right? Now, had I held them, 
I would have made 50 times more money than I had by selling them three years later, right? So you, you, you tend to underestimate how much these things can go up, right? Nobody thought that in Apple released the iPhone in 2007, right? Nobody thought that <laughs> uh, we'd be, you know, 100 times higher in price than they were in 2007. It's just insane, right? But yet um, these technological advances can move, they can move 50, 100 times over 20 years. And I do think we're going to go 50 times higher in Bitcoin over the next, you know, 15, 20 years. I do. And that might be it. You know, that might be more or less it. It may go up a little bit more than that. But um, but I do feel like that this opportunity right now, you know, over the next, let's call it next five, 10 years, is exceptionally good in Bitcoin. Probably on a risk reward basis, the, the best it's ever been, right? Because we've now got it's the the CTF, you know, it's 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 all a question of just of adoption now. The the mechanism, everything is just ready to go. We don't have to invent new things. We don't have to invent new wallets or, you know, convince some, you know, convince some Middle East nation or anything. It's just we just have to get normal Wall Street people to go click on iBit in their, you know, and their Charles Schwab account. It's all there ready for them to buy. So we've never had it this easy, and the adoption can really happen right now at, at record speeds. And that's what we're seeing right now. And so I, it would not at all surprise me that the next year is just going to be a, a banger year for Bitcoin. You know, Now, could we have some drops? Yeah, Bitcoin can drop 10% in a day, right? And it did that the other day, right? Absolutely, it can do that. Um, now, in my particular case, I'm, that's not a reason to not invest in Bitcoin. I think you, you want to be involved in Bitcoin, even though it can have 10%, 20% you know, days. And because I think if you look over a couple of year period, it's going to do extremely well, but it, you know, it, it's going to take, it takes some fortitude and it, it's, it's not for the faint of heart, right? Well, I suppose if you buy and hold, and as you say, not trying to time it, not trying to sell on the upside. Um, well, I mean, it's an approach that many have, but if you just buy and hold, and then it, it doesn't uh, require such a strong stomach. But I, I want to hit on what you said in 15 years time, because that's a number. How do you adjust for inflation with that? How do you, again, you're pricing it back in fiat, and we're seeing declining purchasing power of the dollar and you know continued devaluation and debasement of fiat. How does that equation then factor oh, look, in? Well, I think actually, look, if you look right now today, inflation, is, nominal inflation is pretty low, right? So nominal inflation today in 2024, I like, I like to look at trueflation.com. It's a, it's a pretty good site. And I think the last time I looked at it, we were below 2% or just about 2% in uh, sort of the basket of, of goods. So I think relative to consumer price inflation, I don't expect consumer price inflation to be extremely high over the next 10 years. What I think is likely to happen is more of what we've had before, which is asset price inflation is going to go way up because the government prints all this money. And where does the money go? Well, it doesn't go to buying things necessarily immediately. It goes to buying assets, right? So house prices go up. Gold prices go up, S and P PE rates, PE ratios go up, um, and you know it, it's it's harder and harder to buy a house. If you're a millennial right now, it's you know forget it. Yeah, you have no shot. I mean, you know, I, I own some real. I mean, I own quite a bit of real estate, but you know, it's like if I was a millennial right now and I was you know 30 years old. And even if I have a pretty good job, how am I going to get, you know, how am I going to figure out how to find, you know, to, to, to buy a $3 million house in LA? And that's not a super fancy house in LA, you know, and you know, the house prices in Vancouver, they're not cheap either, right? I'm here and, in New York, you, you know, I know all about it. Yes. Right. So look, I mean, you know, it's just like, uh, I think you know, why are, why are home prices so high? Why are S and P price? Why is, why is Apple computer and Facebook and these companies worth so much? It's because of money printing, right? Because 
they are at some point all this money goes into assets right it finds its way into assets and i think that's the biggest the biggest drawback right is you know competing up with competing with the joneses if you get you know there's there's one inflation rate for people who are at sort of the lowest end of the economic ladder right and then there's another inflation rate for sort of middle class and upper middle class people and you know a lot of a lot of upper class middle class people they look at you know housing prices as 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 a proxy for inflation you know because maybe they want to buy a second a second home maybe they want to buy a first home right they're renting they want to buy a first home and you know they're continuously monitoring those house prices and those i think could go up quite a bit especially if we keep on printing money so that's i think the biggest risk but i do think look you're talking about something that that could go up 15x uh sorry, 64x over the next 15 years, you know, maybe house, maybe if, if you had, if you have 7% over a decade, um, that's going to double, right? That's the, the, the rule of 72, right? So you have 7% inflation over 10 years will double the price in, uh, in 10 years, right? So, you know, yeah, in in fifteen years, you could see a fifteen, you know, more two and a half percent, three times uh, the price. Maybe that's at seven percent, but you're probably not going to see that in consumer prices. So, you know, you can just sort of normalize to U.S. today's dollars. I would say twenty million dollars uh, a a coin is kind of where the, we finally end up. Maybe in future dollars, it's fifty million. I don't know, but look, I think we're getting the key thing is I think we're getting to a million dollars a coin, right? Um, a million dollars for Bitcoin. I, I believe that. I think we're going to get there. But a lot sooner than in 15 years, a million dollars of Bitcoin. Well, what's the, the, yeah, the price I mean, projection for that? Yeah, I mean, our loss is you will get there in eight years, right? In that's eight years. That's the power. Eight okay. years, right? So that's kind of, if you just follow the curve, it says you'll get there in eight, right? Now, a lot of Bitcoiners I know say, no, no, Fred, you're way too bearish. It's going to happen before eight. And they're saying because of the ETF. And I'm not saying I completely disagree. But I just think if you said, Fred, are we going to get to a million dollars within a decade? I'd say probably, you know, probably. And if you believe that, you know, that's enough, right? All you have to do is have 10%, 15% of your portfolio in Bitcoin, and you're you're going to do great, right? And, and you can probably... Uh, you know, having ten percent of your portfolio in Bitcoin is not going to get—it's not going to cause you to lose sleep, right? You know, if you're like me and you've got you know <laughs> north of fifty percent of your net worth in Bitcoin, right? Uh, uh, you know, you care about it a little bit more, right? It's a little bit more uh, of an adrenaline rush, right? But if you have ten percent, five percent in your portfolio, maybe that five percent, ten percent goes to twenty percent with the price appreciation, but you know. It's not so, the worst, not, 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 a, it's not a crazy risk, you know? Right. N not financial advice, but financial between advice. five and 10% of your portfolio in Bitcoin. Um, just as we wrap up here, I want to bring Bitcoin in the context of a central bank digital currency, because you, yeah. you mentioned the ECB, you mentioned Christine Lagarde, you mentioned she's not going to go yeah. for Bitcoin, but we do know that they're aggressively pushing a central bank digital currency. How do you see those dynamics playing out? Can you have a Bitcoin world with a central bank digital currency?